Okay, so let's work our first problem. How many moles of magnesium is 1.5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium? In other words, how many moles can we get out of this many atoms? And you're like, that is a ridiculously large number of atoms. It is, um, but knowing what you already know about Avogadro's number, that's not even a full mole's worth of them. Um, and so it takes a lot of atoms to give us a mole of that specific thing. So, the first thing I'm going to do, as I would with most of our problems, is I'm going to real quick, I'm going to write down my given, my unknown. My given is 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And I'm going to label it, not really necessary in this particular problem, but in general that becomes really, really important to us um, what chemical it is. And so what I'm looking for is moles of magnesium. MOL, by the way, is the abbreviation for moles. I know you're like, why would you even bother to abbreviate it? That's a fantastic question, but that is the abbreviation um, for moles. So I need to find my relationship then between those two things. And of course, our relationship is Avogadro's number. So my relationship is that there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of Mg in one mole. Of mg, And I'm sorry to split that out in two lines, but I've got to keep it all on the board there. Uh, so that's my relationship. And so from that then, and, and I'm just going to do this just to make sure that everybody understands where we're going with this. Remember that we can get two conversion factors out of this. Okay, I could have one mole on the top and Avogadro's number on the bottom. Okay. Or we could have it the other way around, where we've got Avogadro's number on the top and moles on the bottom. Okay, remember that that's how an equality leads us and we've got two possible conversion factors. How do we know which one we need? That's when we start to set things up and do our train tracks and do our normal conversion factor stuff. That will let us know which one of those two things we need. So let me get rid of those real quick so we've got room to work the problem. Okay, so we're going to set up our train tracks. I'm going to put my given here, 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Don't ever not put your units there, okay? Because if you don't put your units, the whole dimensional analysis train track thing totally falls apart. You don't know what goes where. You don't know which of those conversion factors you needed. You don't know what goes on the bottom and the top, and everything goes haywire. So on the bottom of this one, I'm going to put Avogadro's number. Now, why am I putting Avogadro's number down here? Well, because that is atoms, and I want atoms to cancel out. It's specifically, it's atoms of magnesium, which is important to us. The other half of that equality is here. Remember that as soon as you place the bottom one to cancel out the given, you automatically know that the other half of the equality goes on the top. Okay, and so we're going to do the math there. First off, I'm going to cancel out my units. Atoms cancels out. And then we're going to do the math. Now, how does the math work? Well, if you didn't watch the video on how to plug stuff into your calculator, scientific notation into your calculator, now would be a great time to go back and watch that and make sure that you're able to do this. Remember that what you're looking for in most calculators is the, remember that what you're looking for in most of the calculators is that E key or in a lot of TI calculators, it's the double E, but it's going to show up as an E. That means times 10 to that power, okay? Multiply the things on top together, okay? And that's times one, and then divide by the things in the denominator. So essentially what you're doing is taking 1.25 E23 divided by 6.022 E23, and that is going to give us 0 0.208 moles of magnesium. Okay, sig fig wise, we're good to go. In fact, I don't think it was exactly that. I already rounded it to sig figs, but remember that what matters for sig figs when you're doing conversion factor problems is just the given, nothing else has any effect. Conversions never affect the sig figs. It's only what you have for the given. Okay, so that's a, that's a simple conversion um, for moles. Definitely need some practice on that. I'm gonna work one more that has a little twist and is a little bit more complicated, just so you can see another example of how they work. Okay, so problem two here, how many atoms are in 2.12 moles of propane? What makes this problem different than the last one, other than the fact that we're starting in moles and going to atoms, 
which you can sort of see ahead is going to mean your conversion factor is going to be a little bit different. But what's also different is that I don't have atoms in what I'm talking about here. This is not an element. This is a compound. This is a molecule. And that molecule has atoms in it. I'm going to go ahead and write down my equality because in this case, I want you to see that it's going to be a little bit different before we even worry about the problem itself. So here's the thing. Since it's a compound, I don't have atoms of it. I have molecules of it. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and write out what it is. Sorry, I didn't do that initially. Okay? There's, there's not atoms. There are atoms that make up this, but the mole is how many molecules of that substance there is. So if the substance is a compound, then you're going to be talking about molecules of it. Um, and that also means that if I need atoms, I'm going to need an additional conversion factor, which means I'm going to need an additional equality. So how do I get there? Well, I need to see how many, mole how many atoms are in one molecule of it. Well, the way that we know that, if you remember uh, from middle school how you look at one of these formulas, the formula here means that there are three carbons and there are eight hydrogens. And so three plus eight means that there are 11 atoms in one molecule of propane. So I've got how many molecules there are that equal one mole, and then I have how many atoms are in a molecule. So how would you know if you needed to use molecules? Well, it's quite simple. If it's, if it's a compound, then you need to go to molecules. If it's an element, if, like the last one was just magnesium, then you can go straight to atoms. Okay, so it just means I need one additional conversion factor. So let's set this up. Let's do our given and our unknown here, um, and then set our problem up. So our given is that we've got 2.12 moles of propane. My unknown is that I'm looking for atoms that are in propane. So remember that I don't have a direct relationship between atoms and moles in this case because it's a compound. So I can go from moles, okay, to molecules, and then from molecules to atoms. And so I'm gonna have a slightly larger train track scenario than I may have had in some past problems. So my given 2.12 moles of propane, Okay, we want to cancel moles first, so I'm going to take this part first. One mole, C3H8. As soon as I put this on the bottom, then the other half of the equality has to come to the top. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Do not, under any circumstances, abbreviate the word molecules, because obviously it would abbreviate to look like moles and you'll get yourself confused. You're like, why would they choose something like moles then and molecules and those are close together? Yeah, definitely a problem. So just don't abbreviate molecules. Make sure that you leave it um, its full distance. So then I also need my other equality here because I don't want molecules. I want atoms. Okay, and so this is where you just step back and say, okay, what cancels and then what am I left with? So moles cancel. Molecules cancel, and so you're going to be left with atoms. So that's like the dimensional analysis part in terms of making sure that you've got the right units. Now the rest of it is just math. So in this case, everything in the numerator, so 2.12 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd times 11, all of that, divided by everything on the bottom. Now everything on the bottom in this case happens to be 1, which makes it a lot easier. But if you remember the last problem, what was on the bottom was Avogadro's number, and so that obviously is going to make things a lot different. Okay, so what's our answer here? We've got 1.40 times 10 to the, sorry, 25th atoms. Again, my significant figures here are 3, because I had 3 here, and that's where we're going to go to. All right, we're going to have to work a lot of these in class, and if I really feel um, that the class is struggling, I'll probably make a follow-up video with a few more calculations, um, but I'd like to see us um, work them in class to see how that goes. So that's what, remember that moles are a way of essentially measuring really small things, which are atoms. We're going to do that by weighing. We'll see a little bit more in the next video. 
Remember that one mole of anything is that many, is Avogadro's number of that substance. So molecules, atoms, ions, bananas, green beans, fig trees, whatever um, that it happens to be. For us, usually molecules, atoms, and ions. All right? Thanks, kiddos.